What's up, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Bible Nerd Podcast. I want to answer a question today that is something that comes up often, and it's this idea about the relationship between theology and philosophy. Now, this is not going to be some sort of an intense Bible study, although I will say we're going to be looking at the Bible a little bit today. So uh, if you're if you're just listening to this, this may be one where you want to hop over to the YouTube channel and check it out. I haven't really announced that, but we are starting to go ahead and upload some of these on YouTube. I don't know if it'll be there like, right away. Um, so uh, just caveat there. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're already going to be seeing this. But um, we're going to be looking at a little bit of the Bible today, and I'm, I'm trying to bring in and, and do a little bit more uh, video-related content for you guys this year. So definitely check that out. Um, so the question sort of that I want to to answer is this idea of is philosophy biblical? Is philosophy biblical? Now I think that is a fair question to deal with. And so now I think that is a fair question to deal with and something that is is quite misunderstood by many people. So let's talk about what philosophy is, first of all. Philosophy is just that process by which you, you are approaching something, okay, where you make distinctions between one thing and another thing. I've heard it said this way, that, that philosophy is the art of making distinctions, okay? The more philosophical you are, the more you will be able to tell the difference between things. And, and this is, it's actually pretty profound if you grasp this, that the difference between people in terms of their knowledge, in terms of what they know, again, in terms of philosophically seeing the world, really just comes down to being able to make distinctions. The, the clearer the lines are drawn between any two things, the better. Um, and, and, and when you start to mesh them together is when you get into trouble. So let's just use an example. An example of something that we talk about often uh, on the Bible Nerd podcast is creation. Okay? You, you sort of start in this, uh, at least many people um, who grew up in, in Christianity, especially here in America, um, a lot of times we, we, we start growing up and we think the, the, the core question is creation versus evolution as it, as it relates to the creation issue, right? We think creation versus evolution when we start learning about this stuff. And we think those are the two sides broadly. We'll, of course, when we very first start, we don't even know that much, right? When we very first start, it becomes a question of um, there is a God and, and he is creator and like, duh, right? <laughs> like there are, like, what are you talking about? There are people who don't even believe that. And uh, the answer is yes, there are, right? There are people who don't even believe that. And, and so that's sort of the first distinction that you make. Well then, you know, now, so I started with that distinction as well. And, and then now, you know, we just came off the heels of a series where we went deep into the different types of creationism there are and why I think young age creationism is the correct answer. And we talked through broad strokes three, but honestly, um, embedded in there was probably something like five or seven different variations on what legitimate Bible believing Christians believe just on the issue of creation. Not even talking about when you get into actual naturalism and atheism. So, and what is that? Well, that's philosophy. That's what we're doing. We're, we're a, approaching that distinction. We're understanding, oh, there's different forms of creation. We're learning more. We're expanding our thoughts. Okay. Now, I've heard some people say, well, I don't do philosophy or I don't start with philosophy. I start with theology. Some people say that. The problem with this, you ready for this? Here's the problem. This is a reductio ad absurdum. The problem is, is it is their philosophy that they start with theology instead of philosophy. Do you see how that's self-defeating? To say, I start with theology, not philosophy, is actually a philosophical statement and position. 
So let me just say that it is not that that God does not want us to do philosophy, okay? It is that there are philosophies that are anti-God, okay? To put it in in the simplest terms, right? There are philosophies that are anti-God and they are pro-atheism. They are pro-other gods. They are pro-materialism. They are pro-self-love. And they are pro all these other things that are not about Jesus not life-giving, and not about the gospel. So let's look at a passage of scripture. I'm going to bring in, uh, I'm going to bring in some scriptures here, and I think this is going to be uh, helpful. So, so, so here is a, uh, oh, I just lost it. Colossians 2.8, yes? Yeah. So, so here is a, a verse that often gets brought up in church. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now, what does this verse mean? Now, some people, again, who are maybe young in their thinking of in terms of philosophical distinctions and things, uh, they might they might look at this and say, well, the Bible actually warns you about philosophy. So we obviously shouldn't do that. We should not engage in philosophy because the Bible warns us about it. Now, why think that the Bible is saying that? Now, this word spoil, again, let's go, let's go back here to this. This, this word spoil, we just did a study on this at church, which is really, really interesting. So, so this word spoil here is, is not talking about like, oh, you spoiled rotten brat or something like that. Instead, it has the idea of, of military spoils, right? Of, of, being, of being taken in battle by someone else. So the idea there is when this philosophy comes to spoil you, when this philosophy comes to spoil you, Basically, it is going to take you. It is going to take control of you. It is going to take command over you. And what's this about vain deceit, okay? Now, this is very specific. Vain deceit. What I believe this is talking about is that this is talking about our vanity, and we're lying to ourselves about our our vanity after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So what's happening here is that these believers, and if you know, I don't want to get all into this, but they're, they're dealing with something that is often talked about as called the Colossian heresy. It deals with Gnosticism and a bunch of other things. It's this, this feel good philosophy that has bad things to say about the natural world and and sort of has this belief that the spiritual world is the is the highest and, and only true good, and that as a result of, uh, of that, there is the special knowledge that one can gain from the spiritual world that basically comes in and says that the natural world is just evil, okay? And, and that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Christ teaches. And it gives people this idea of, of vain deceit, right? It gives people this idea that through this philosophy that they could be special, that these people could be different. They were different because they had special knowledge, they had special circumstances. And this is not Christ. This is not life. This is, this is, this is after the tradition of men, you see, and after the rudiments of, of, of the world, that idea of rudiments of the world. There's a lot of interesting, uh, interesting stuff that you could get into there. Um, I actually, I think it has a lot to do with, with spiritual opposition to Christ. Um, and uh, this gets into some divine council worldview stuff that maybe we could talk about sometime. Okay, the idea is that basically it's antichrist, right? Everything here is antichrist. And see, it says that that what we need to do is go after Christ, though, because for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So if you're, if you're looking for God, if you're looking for the spiritual, if you're looking for Christ, if you're looking for true knowledge, then what you're going to do is go after Christ not the rudiments of the world, not the tradition of men, not vain deceit, not deceptive philosophy. 
But the Bible says instead that ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now, what does what does that have to do anything with, right? Well, remember the Apostle Paul, when he talks about powers and principalities, these are territorial terms. Okay. These are these are spiritual terms of territorial authority and power. So to just kind of summarize what he's saying here is you don't need the spiritual wickedness that is taught through this idea of, of Gnosticism or, or, or anything about this idea of, of, of a philosophy that is antichrist, be it whatever, be it self-love, be it that, 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 you know, to bring it into modern days, that, that people ought to be segregated by their class and by their uh, power dynamics and things like that. These are all antichrist. These are all things that go against the message of the gospel. Christ is the head of all things. He, in him, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And in him, right, he has all authority. He is the head of all principality, all power, all power, all spiritual things. Therefore, what Christ says about the spiritual, about the natural, what Christ embodied and what he taught, that, that is what we must believe. That is what we, we must cling to. Now, here in Proverbs, chapter 1, I believe it's verse 7, the Bible says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, what does that mean? Well, a lot of things that we could talk about. But importantly, it means that the Bible is not against wisdom, instruction, knowledge, clear thinking, right? We are, we are given admonition all throughout the Bible that our job is to be in a place where we can cast down arguments, where we can think clearly about things. Again, 1 Peter 3.15, right? The classic verse, if you're going to do apologetics, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of you. Or reason of the hope that is in you is meekness and fear, right? Like, you can't do this if you don't think. You can't do this if you don't use your mind. So philosophy in that regard is very, very important. I heard, or rather I read, uh, Dr. John Oswald wrote a fantastic book called The Bible Among the Myths. And in the book, he makes the point that um, the, the, the revelation of Christ at, at the time when it was, and mixed so that you get the, the Greek philosophical, like the deep thinking of the, of the philosophical Greek world. And then you've got the Hebrews, their belief in a monotheistic God. These two things together, honestly brought together in the, the person of Christ and then the early expansion of the church, these things are what gave rise to the ability even for science and rational thinking and modern thought to come um, into play and, and to become prevalent. The reason being is that the Hebrews didn't have the concepts of, of, of philosophy and, and, and thinking in, in that regard that the philosophical Greco-Romans did. But then the Greco-Romans didn't have that foundation of a monotheistic worldview. And so the, the, the Christian um, movement that, that was really a blend of these two things uh, it was very Jewish, obviously, very, very Jewish, but also that Greco-Roman thought and everything that 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 was brought in as it expanded westward. Um, these things gave rise to modern science, to modern philosophy, to being able to think clearly, rationally about these things. The Bible is not against, here's the point, the Bible is not against your thought life. The Bible is not against philosophy, okay? The term philosophy being used here, it's not talking about the kind of thing where you're just thinking deeply about something or making distinctions, that sort of philosophy is totally biblical. What this is talking about is a specific heresy that Paul was dealing with. And, and, and broader than that, any sort of spiritual opposition, any sort of philosophical position that has to do with the world after the tradition of men, um, that has to do with, with Antichrist is obviously not Christ. And so those things, we must leave out. This is why, by the way, I just read a quote that was fantastic the other day. I, I wish I could attribute who it was. Um, 
but it was talking about, and I'm not going to obviously try to quote it verbatim, but the idea was that, that this person was scared for their kids initially that they were going to have to deal with basically the atheism section of the bookstore. But today, the, the fear is actually more like the self-help section. Now, I actually like some self-help, personal productivity, things like that, but I, I have the wisdom to know the difference and to understand when when things are happening that are antichrist versus not antichrist and i try to just stick with authors who are thinking in terms of a purely biblical worldview um in the first place but it's important to realize that a lot of self-help masquerades as christianity right and christian teaching and it's just not that and so these are the kind of things that Paul is talking about that we need to avoid this is the sort of philosophy and sort of thinking that we must stay away from because true life and true knowledge, all of these things are bound up in Christ. It's in Christ that are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We find Christ, we find life, we find knowledge, we find our true purpose in life. So this is the answer. Is philosophy biblical? I mean, yeah. Insofar as philosophy is the discipline of making distinctions and thinking clearly about things, yeah, it's totally biblical. What's not biblical is antichrist philosophy. So let's stay away from that. All right, God bless. This has been a fun little Bible study. Again, I hope you get to watch it on YouTube. Uh, I will try to have this up as soon as possible. But even if you're just listening on the podcast, I hope you found this useful, informative, and helpful. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one.